Today, I'm going to build one of the most popular high-end gaming and virtual reality rigs, which is also one of the best machines today overall for any type of work before you go with Xeon workstations. These are the components and I will talk about each as I build the machine. We will need two screwdrivers and a box cutter. What I like to do and I think is efficient is to go through all the boxes and just take out the items that I actually need. Put aside packaging and the rest. If you're not sure what you need, then I recommend reading the manual first or watching this video. For motherboard box, I will need only the backplate, SATA cable and screws for M2 drive. I'm keeping the CPU in the plastic case until I actually need it. GTX 1080 Ti. This is Founders Edition as it was the only one when I ordered. Evo cooler because I have a good experience with those. And power supply with motherboard, CPU, GPU and SATA cables. The next part is dismantling the case. Also take everything out as it will be much more comfortable to work with more space inside. And if you drop a screw it will be easier to take it out. Some cases come with motherboard standoff screws that you will need to screw in, but this one had them already in place. I just need a standard metric M3 screws, which is the most common screw found in PCs. The back plate is the second worst part of the build and it is the easiest to forget, and you will have to take everything apart if you do. That's why I like to have it out of the box and on visible place before I begin. It should snap into the place. Make sure the holes are clear and there are no flaps in the way. With this case I had no issues with positioning motherboard, but in some cheap cases I even had to leave the back plate out. Screw in the first two diagonal screws and the rest are easy. Installing the CPU and the cooler is the most complicated part, but it is also easy. It is more complicated if you get a universal cooler like this one that will have a lot of parts and adapters to fit all possible motherboards. Just check your CPU socket number and find the correct instructions from the cooler manual. Mine was not there, but it still fits correctly. The rest is like Kinder Surprise Eggs. Follow the letters for your build and find the exact screws that you need. Mount the backplate first and pay attention to which side goes in. This screw thread has a flat side, so it doesn't spin in place. I'm using here the provided tightening cap, so I don't need anything beside Phillips screwdriver. Do not over tighten it. There are special screwdrivers that limit the torque, but I'm not fancy. The next is the CPU, and you should read the instructions on the cap. Check if any pins are bent before you begin, but don't touch anything.
both CPU and the socket have notches that will help you with orientation, so do it right with the first attempt. Flip the lever up and then back down. Don't play with popping up the cap like I did. The cooler should come with thermal paste. Sometimes it's not in the tube, but already pre-applied on the cooler itself. Some builders place a dot on the center and let it be squashed and spread with the cooler. But I found that most bad cooling that I had to replace had it that way, so I prefer spreading it evenly in thin layer. Don't squeeze out all the paste. You can add more if necessary. Don't hold cooler by the sides at any time, unless you play guitar, as the grill is very sharp. Here I had to move the screws to the middle position. Check the positioning before final placement. Fiddling with cooler would mess up the thermal paste. This cooler had notches to prevent it from rotating. Place it straight down. When the two diagonal screws are in place, do the rest with the screwdriver and do it like car tire, going crisscross, otherwise you will squeeze out the thermal paste on one side. The next is RAM. Here it says I need to populate A2 and B2 if I have two sticks. In the previous build it was A1 and B1, so you will have to consult the manual for this. Move the locks out of the way, slide the sticks in until you hear the click and the locks spring back into the place on their own. Now that the RAM is there, I will put the CPU fan. Pay attention to the direction it blows. The air should go from the front of the case, through the CPU cooler and out through the back. Motherboard will have multiple fan connectors and you will find the CPU one in the manual. Don't worry if there are different number of pins. This was a bad idea to hold the grill for support. I hope you have checked beforehand if your CPU cooler can fit into the case. Some cases are slimmer and this one wouldn't fit, but when purchasing a case, it will have listed the maximum cooler height and graphic card length. Cool. M2 NVMe drives are up to three times faster than the SATA drives, and this machine supports a booting system from it. That is another thing to check when buying a motherboard. Since M2 drives can be different lengths, you will have to find the correct hole to place the standoff.
The instructions for the front I.O. connectors are in the booklet that came with the motherboard. It will tell you what is the plus and what is the minus for each pin. Plugs usually don't have it labeled, but it will have an arrow to show you the plus side, or the red wire. I find that the text was always on the bottom side of the plug, but you should check. Depending on the case, it will have other plugs, and usually you cannot go wrong as it can be plugged in only in one place, in one orientation. Nothing special about GPU installation. This is a modular power supply, so the cables can be unplugged from the power supply. I like to plug in the cables into components first. Everything is labeled and it is impossible to plug in something in the wrong place.
the hard drive cage can be placed closer and further from the power supply to accommodate different power supply sizes. These covers slide inelegantly into place, just because I did it a few times. The first time it was very frustrating. Ok, this is pretty much it. I have rerouted some cables so it looks cleaner. It's a pretty nice case with headphone, microphone, fan control, which I later plugged in, two USB 3 ports, power button, and that's it. The motherboard has these glowing lights which you can see if you remove magnetic top lid, but you can turn them off in the BIOS. This is the first boot. The case is super quiet, and what you are hearing here is AC and two other old computers in the room. That's it. The PC is completed and it is a very good VR workstation that should be good for the next five years at least. I will compare it to Ryzen and Xeons in the other videos on my channel. So. Subscribe. See you in the next video. Cheers.